Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to Mirror Interpretation to Dorova. I'm continuing to record and release this um, information related to to my disturbing moments with uh, this person that conducted my pre-polygraph interview. And I believe due to his to which errors I'm still followed by, I believe this organization agents um, yesterday October it's November already 7th there was a car parked outside the building um, and remained there the entire day that is not person who live here and I recognize one of the people that I met so um, I am still followed and I am still intimidated and I believe that this is because of this poor job that this person did or horrible job or unfair job or whatever he did in this pre-polygraph session, whatever he typed um, was not representing the reality in some form or shape. Uh, and I am creating those videos for the merely reason to correct this if it's possible and to be left alone. Um, I am not here to ruin anybody's reputation. I'm just sharing my experience, my interaction, what disturbed me. Uh, yes, there were moments during these three days I spent about 24-25 hours with this person. There were moments that he was acting adequately and there were moments that he wasn't. So in those videos I am just sharing the moments where he was, I would call this out of line. Um, how I know he was not doing what he was supposed to do. Uh, out of fear, I will admit I have not searched or make profound search on the polygraph. Um, I remember like when I applied, I look, I read something, what is polygraph, I have seen shows about polygraph. I had an idea, I never did profound search how the polygraph should be done uh, properly. And is, is that some kind of a brainwashing set where the person have to mentally break you or bring you to a nerve break? Or is that a just a um, very civil procedure uh, where you communicate and the person take notes and then they can check the truthfulness of your information? Um, I had a very civil idea of the pre-polygraph before I have these interactions with this person. And because of the brain damage that this person did with all the things that I mentioned in the previous videos and the ones that I'm going to share today on day three, I had this profound doubt. Uh, he was successful in making me doubt my perceptions uh, through manipulating me. Uh, and the techniques that he used was gaslighting, brainwashing, and psychological pressure. And in this video, I'm going to talk about these things. The reason that I talk about this is because I, it happened that I met someone who had, who is American. I would say I speak with few people who have done the procedure of clearance. And none of them had this type of abuse that I was exposed to uh, and because of the damages of this brainwashing and gaslighting and pressure and also right now I believe there was some kind of a magnetic waves used on me I'm going to talk about this magnetic waves and what is MK Ultra actually you can search online about MK Ultra I believe that some similar device was used on me by this agent inside of this room and he also sent people after I declined the job to follow me and continue using this machine on me 
in some kind of attempt to break me or damage my brain. And as a fact, every time I interact with some of those individuals, I have a very specific headache, like a clip type of feeling in the brain. I would feel nauseous, puking, extremely tired and exhausted uh, without any apparent reason beside the fact that I would feel this wave. I'm going to talk about this in a future videos. I don't know if this is something that other people experience during this interview. Hereby I'm sharing my opinions, my belief, my feelings. Uh, I don't know if this is a regular procedure for these organizations or it was some kind of um, accident or somebody... I am in the belief now that this person did things he were not supposed to do during these days that he met me. And also after I declined the job. Uh, this person uh, mislead this organization to target me and follow me and uh, basically pers just obstacle me in every single thing I do. And because of this process being going on for so long, um, I'm creating those videos. In my last attempt to stop this, Obviously, there is no guarantee that this will stop, I know, uh, but at least I try if this doesn't stop as the agents of this organization have been inviting me to leave the country, to run and whatnot, uh, I am guessing I would have to leave America and move to Europe or to another country said that um said that <clears throat> it's this is just my last try to stop this although this is extremely uncomfortable for me so in today's video i'm going to talk about the third day of the pre-polygraph interview with this Mr. Chris. So as you understand, um, already at the day two, I already saw that at day one, that this person was just trying to instigate me, to like provoke me, to make me feel up most uncomfortable through this aggressive and in interrupting me and insinuating things and pressuring me and being angry and being frustrated and being irritated merely by everything. So now it's day two and I remember that I, I had a problem now. The problem is what to wear. Uh, in the previous video you saw, I wear exactly that dress for this interview and he complained about it. So in the first interview with this pre-polygraph, I think I was a most formal because I wear a shirt. Uh, but I didn't wear tie, so I was like five to six formal. Then, in my opinion, wearing a dress on the second interview, I was less formal. I just wear something that I thought it was comfortable and adapted to this setting, you know. On the second meeting, this person wear um, poorly, very poor. So I don't know if it was part of his persona, the fake persona, or it's just he didn't have idea how to dress, but he looked very bad. Uh, like poor and when I say bad I mean just um, not clean not like his clothes were dirty but he had this like type of a shirt that have quadrats and rigas and just very odd clothes so anyways like, if you look at us without knowing who is who, it looks like I was his boss and he was my gardener. 
he was just that way of dressed and probably somehow he didn't like that I was dressed nice um, and the matter of the fact is that I don't dress for men's I like to clarify this I never did I like to dress for myself uh, if I dress up I I like it it's fun it's exciting um, it's it's if I'm sad I like to dress up sometimes and make some makeup and just I am a girl and for girl dressing up is fun sometimes and why not you know what I mean so now I had this interview on August 16 and I have provided all the documents all the PDFs on day two I realized that this person just I thought that he just needed me to be there while he read those PDFs I, I just didn't understand the wasting of time that this person did on day two of meeting me and I I was just feeling or think I am thinking that this person just wanted to spend time with me um, I don't know why uh, but this time that he spent with me wasn't like focusing on the reason why we're in this office. But it was just m merely like these little boys that like you and they're going to come and pull your hair and throw something on you. This is exactly how he was behaving. Like this uh, type of guys that are very insecure and they're attracted to you uh, in a... And they are so insecure that instead of experiencing that attraction or likeness that they feel for you, they bully you. So this this behaviors of his on the, the interview number two was extremely bully. And as you understand, um, I have already realized that having conversation with this person wasn't like physically possible mm. like to listen to me it was challenging for him he would rather interrupt me and get angry at me and get frustrated at me uh, for some reason or simply for no reason you know so as he was triggered of my clothes, I was thinking that maybe, maybe he was triggered because I was dressed feminine. So I decided to dress, I dressed this jacket. I don't remember a shirt, but I think it was something like that and a jeans and a sneakers. So he was wearing jeans every time and I was like, part of me was thinking, shall I copy what he, he put on? The truth is that I didn't have that type of ugly shirt that he had. It was completely out of taste. So, I mean, I could wear my pajama, but this wouldn't be adequate because the most ugly thing probably that I had similar to what he was wearing is this pajama that have a, a red and black quadrats. But I don't think this is adequate to the work setting. So I was having this moment with not knowing what to wear. And so part of me kind of was scared that this person would be again angry and criticize my clothes or criticize the way I dress, the way I dress. Well, for the first 20 years of my life, I didn't have no normal clothes. So bullying me because I dress with taste, I just don't understand why. Um, and one part of me was thinking maybe this person wants me to dress differently. But when I asked him, he couldn't say how to dress and what he would prefer. If he had preferences on my, if he said, you know what, just wear jeans or just wear I don't know t-shirt I would have wear jeans and t-shirt so I believe that if you make a request for someone to change the way they dress imagine and this is my like future boss or someone from whom my job depend 
I'm ready to switch the way I dress. I don't, I mean, I can change. It doesn't really matter to me, but you have to know what you want. You can't be merely just triggered the way I dress without being able to say, wear shirt, please. Wear jeans, please. I would wear shirt and jeans. I would wear pyjama if you want me to. The matter of the fact is that I've been with a pyjama in a restaurant. It's not a problem for me to change what I wear. But I just was feeling that this person was kind of merely complaining just to bully me and make me feel uncomfortable and be irritated about that. Not because I had to change how I dress. And as a matter of the fact, I apply for a language job and and if, if there were any requirements on what to wear during those interviews, you could tell me openly and I can follow them. There is no problem. But as there were not any requirements, we were not in the hospital or an x-ray machine. And if I know in the x-ray medical interpreting, I wear flat shoes and I try to have anything without metal and, and no bobby pins in my hair. So I adapt to, to the environment easily. It's not like I have a problem to, to switch, but it's just like I didn't understand what this person wanted. And so maybe when I was 14, my father would beat me because I wear shorts. I remember that. So um, I had the same problem once again with my father. That is, you understand, not very healthy individual, my stepfather. Uh, I'm thinking, at least I know, uh, clean clothes, new clothes, any clothes that look good trigger him so to avoid abuse in my father house i would look for the most dirty and broken clothes with holes uh, to wear so to avoid triggering him you know and here i have this person again triggered because i am nicely dressed and wasn't able to tell me what i need to change in that so when I asked about this, he said less formal. Well, I don't think my dress was formal, but the 11th of August was Friday and this interview was on the 16th and I think it was 11th Friday, 12, 13, 16th of August was Wednesday. So I'm thinking uh, this, this few days that pass, I have this problem and I don't know what to wear. And I'm trying to guess what would trigger less this individual because he was already disturbed severely. Uh, and I'm thinking at this point, I, I was thinking I had the, the English exam, sorry, I had the Bulgarian test postponed to August 10th. The reason why it was scheduled after, instead of from the 31st was moved to the next week they told me that they didn't receive the sample of the test or something but i believe the reason why is because i was supposed to do the pre-polygraph with this person christian and him instead of finishing what he was supposed to do in three four five hours uh, add another like seven hours if you want because he was supposed to finish if he was doing his job and not trying to trigger me molest me attack me aggressor me interrupt me get angry at me accusing me of his dysfunctionality he would have finished this this interview the 11th of august the, the day two but this person wasn't doing this he was doing something else he had different ideas about me or or different uh, i don't know if that was instructions that he received i don't know if that was some special way to treat me because i'm a foreigner and how dare you gonna work in our top jobs i'm gonna break you as he told me many times i'm gonna destroy you i'm gonna break your big ego 
and so on. So having this in mind, these whispers that he would talk to himself from time to time and then act like nothing happened. Of course, I didn't want to trigger this person. And, and the first time I said to him, sir, I don't want to see you again. This was my, my way to communicate that being around somebody so unhealthy is really damaging. It's damaging having in mind the difficulty of sharing the, the story of my childhood with someone as sick as this individual while he's aggressing me, questioning me, throwing tantrums, being irritated and angry at me. That made this interview extremely challenging. Adding on the top of that, my realization that this person is just trying to waste time. I don't know why. I just didn't know why. And I know I'm a good looking lady, but I, I, I probably was in some kind of a denial because this person in front of me was far from anyone that anyone will find attractive. This is the truth. Not because of the way he look, because of these behaviors that I mentioned in the previous videos. So I believe that probably this person isn't very successful with females and he probably doesn't have a sexual life because of the unhealthy psychological, psychiatrical issue this person has. This is my guess. Just, of course, most, most of this I don't know. But on the other hand, this person was trying to portray his happily family and all this BS anyways. So now I'm having this problem with what to wear. And after thinking and being kind of worried about that, I having in mind his insecurities, that he is short, that he's not very good looking, and that he's just exploding uh, emotionally unstable, psychologically unstable and all that doing horrible job, in my opinion, uh, I was thinking that probably what trigger him in my clothes, it's the fact that the dress is feminine and that I look feminine in, in these clothes, you know? So I just, I just didn't know what to dress, you know? I was just thinking and thinking and puzzled. And I finally decided to dress more like, like a man, you know, men wear jeans and some jacket and something or some like more, um, not feminine. Uh, so, um, he wouldn't be triggered. And so it, when I take the pump, I put the lowest shoes I had. I put the uh, all-star sneakers. So now this person was as high as me, almost as high as me. So maybe this person struggled with some insecurity about his height because he was not very tall for male. And if I wear pumps, probably this triggered him somehow because I was taller than him. I don't know if that was what triggered him. Uh, he was disturbed anyways without my pumps or without whatever I wear. So this time I am dressing, trying to guess or trying to not trigger this individual. I'm going to talk about day three now, 16th of August. I'm going to talk about uh, this psychological um, tactics or um, or what this person did that other people who are born in America, I talk to males, white, born in America, who... Um, how to say, have done the same process, but haven't had any of these experiences. So I'm going to talk about what is gaslighting, because this person used gaslighting, brainwashing, 
and psychological pressure on me. Uh, and, and what is the most surprising for me in this setting is the fact that I went there intentional, collaborating, providing all the information, sending PDF. The days that I didn't see him, I make sure he have the most information he need, everything possible that I could guess, organize the way this person requested to spend less time with him. This is the truth. Because I recognize that this person is not mentally sane. He is insane and he is sick and he is unhealthy. So for me, how to avoid interacting with this unhealthy individual meant that I spent many hours to create every single thing that he mentioned that he needed. I wrote it on piece of paper and I have this piece of paper I could show you. Uh, everything to prepare and send to him and I spend many hours preparing this to avoid spending time with this person but he did everything possible to do this process as redundant as possible and as disturbing as possible um I don't know why, you know, th there is these people that experience attraction in a very unhealthy ways. I believe that this person was attracted to me and he wanted to be close to me. But somehow he realized that he didn't have a chance. Uh, not the physical appearance because whatever he was showing was not the way he looked. And, and this is the day that I remember that I walk in um, and he was wearing a tag. And on this tag, it was his picture and the name, which was different from what he um, disclosed to me. Um, I did not read the full name. I purposely stop myself from doing that. I just stop on the picture on his FBI tag and look at him and look at the picture that was hanging on his neck. And I mentioned uh, that uh, the picture looked very different from him. So this guy made an error. Uh, he forgot to take his tag. I don't know if the picture that I saw, it's his real identity, how he really looked like, or it was one of the multiple identity these people have. If it was just a fake thing or if it was real, it doesn't matter. But um, this was a confirmation for me that this person, whoever he was, which I know for 100% sure that he was just a male, and I know that he was not very young. Um, when I say that he was not, I think he was closer to 16. Uh, based on his voice, some gestures, how he moved. Uh, he lacked this flexibility when he walked. Uh, when people get elderly, the bones get stiffer and the cartilage in the knees get a little bit consumed. And he would have specific ways of walking that would show me that he was not very young. Uh, so seeing this picture was just a confirmation that this person had a mask and, and I didn't care to be honest with you. I mean, naturally, of course, of course, I didn't believe anything this person said to me for the entire duration of this interview probably was just a lie. But I don't care. This doesn't matter to me. I'm not there to find out who is this person. I'm there for my pre-polygraph. So it was very confusing why this person would talk about himself and stuff. I asked a question about the, the bracelets that he had because it looked like one of the spiritual things I have seen somewhere. But I personally didn't care much about this person. I just asked out of curiosity if you want to put it on. Uh, I don't know. I don't care if he's actually married. I think he's lying. He's obviously not married and he doesn't have successful family. This is, you could see this from not one mile, one million miles. You can recognize a failure because of his vibrations. 
it has nothing to do with uh, the look, the age, or these unhealthy patterns that he exhibit uh, in the past few days with me. You gotta be insane to be married to this individual, in my opinion, or at least equally sick. And probably the life of him would be a nightmare. There is no way that that would be something good there, you know. But this is my personal impressions. So I don't know this person. I don't know that I know for sure the name Chris is not real, but it doesn't really matter. Because I was there for a different in different reasons, you know. Uh, and um, and anyways, um, you know I am a weird girl already. As I told you, I, I look every detail, the shoes, and how I know this guy was insecure because of his height, because of the shoes that he wear. Um, the shoes. There is a lot of things about the shoes that can tell you who a person is. I'm not going to go in detail there. I have read a lot and I have checked my weird girl theories, if you want to believe that. So this guy was obviously having insecurity about his height. And, and he didn't like my formal dressing because I wear pump like three inches high. So it's that high. But this was making me like higher than him and he didn't like that. So fine, I realize now that I'm fine. Now this guy feels more confident because I don't wear heels. And I was thinking uh, he's going to focus on the job. We're on day three of these interviews that he was just wasting time in day two. There wasn't much he did there. At least in my opinion, except aggressing me, being angry, interrupting me and whatnot, blaming me for his dysfunctionality. And now we're on day three. Um, and so I'm going to talk about what is ga gaslighting, brainwashing and pressure. And then I'm going to talk what he did during this day three to exercise this type and form of abuse on me. What I don't understand in this case is why. I am there. I'm giving you 100%. I am providing everything you ask for and beyond. Uh, you don't like the way I structure the document. I redo it. Uh, you don't like that I put them all in one document. You want me to create uh, separate documents for my contact, separate them by countries. I do it. I do everything this person asks. I respond to every single question this person asks. And he is still angry, aggressing me, abusing me, gaslighting me, trying to brainwash me. But the, the confusing part about the brainwashing is that it was like there was no goal about it. There was just simply merely to make me doubt myself in a ways. But let's start with what is gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of abuse, is a manipulative tactic that involves make someone question their own reality, perception or memory. The goal is to make the victim doubt their own instincts, self-esteem and depend trust or fully or fully relay on the abuser perspective uh, and I and then this I'm gonna give you examples this is I search what is gaslighting online example of how this is described online and what this person did uh, example questioning the memory abuser questions the target memory of events if they remember accurately and this is what this person did. I'm going to give you an example. The childhood memory about when I was stopped from school. Uh, he questioned this many, many times on day one, on day two. And now we are on day three. And instead of proceeding with doing the job he's supposed to do, he is trying to question and he is questioning this memory over and over and over again. Uh, number two, changing or deviation. 
tactic of gaslighting that acts like the conversation is about something else. For example, he wouldn't let me... When I start asking, answering the question, he would roll his eyes, excel, like, show me that he's angry. And then he would, like, let me read the question again. <laughs> I don't think this person has been to the university, to be honest with you. Um, and I have been to three universities, but this is not what makes me knowledgeable. I keep reading and I keep developing and learning new things. Just because I've been to university doesn't mean that university give me my education and I just stop. Um, so this person was trying to humiliate me in every possible way by insinuating that I'm stupid or dumb or I didn't understand a question. Uh, next thing, next example of gaslighting. Needs are not important. Abuser act and make things to demonstrate that the victim needs and feelings are not relevant. I will tell you what this agent do. If I need a break and I ask for a break or I want to go to the toilet, trust me, being in one room with a sick individual like that, it's very hard because there is nobody there. Uh, you naturally condition to obey because you. I feared for my life in this room. I was so scared and terrorized by this person that I, I just like try to do what he wanted and the moment I did it, he was angry over and over again. So my needs are not important. For example, if I need a break or go to the toilet, he's very angry. And he's going to be like, it's your fault. It's That's why it's because of you. We can't finish this process. My boss is going to check on me. That's all your fault. Is This is why you're so difficult. It's because of you. So I had to hold my pee. And as you see me in the morning, I drink to at least 32 to 40 ounces of water. So I had my water bottle with me. I drink a lot of water. And so this person is angry and I feel uncomfortable to go to the toilet because of the way he reacts. He is pissed at me. So deny things, another form of gaslighting. Abuser act like have forgotten what has happened or the things that has happened. Denial. This is a huge thing that this agent do for the entire period of these three days. He was denying, he was acting. For example, my childhood story, uh, he was acting like I killed someone. And in this office, he's there to make me confess whom I killed when I was 14. Uh, he completely forgot that I was there because I applied for a language job. Um, I think he completely forgot that I was there for a different reasons, which was to do the clearances. And, and he would say, I will break you. I will break your big ego. Uh, I know you don't like this, but I got to do this. You don't have to do this. I'm giving you my 100%. And you abusing me, it doesn't make you a good agent. It makes you an insane person who targets someone who simply merely apply, apply for a language job. And in this case, I already knew I never even apply in your office, guys. I apply in DC. I did not even apply to work for you. I apply to work in DC. So you find me, you made everything possible. So I apply to your office and, and, and you, may, you invite me to interview, which I did before I even apply for a job. And after the interview, 
a few weeks later, you requested me to apply for this job, which you probably created this platform where I can send the information. But as a matter of a fact, I have not even applied for this job. And there is no reason for you to grill me like that and, and to abuse me in these ways. That was very strange. That is very strange. That is very weird, you know. Um, the another weird thing about this person, which confirmed that he have a fake face and fake everything, he was so focused into breaking me and abusing me, he did not have a sip of water day number uh, two, the entire day he did not eat. He did not drink a sip of water. He was there merely focused, trying to irritate me, to abuse me, to gaslight me, to bug me, to uh, attack me, to disturb me, to trigger me, everything negative. There was no conversation, there was no healthy interaction at all in this entire day. And, and I knew that this person is insane. It's just a sick individual that get a little power and he probably do this thing with a lot of the candidates, not only with me. And because of the trust that he hasn't been, I believe he probably has been working for this agency many years. I, to be so insane, I would say probably he has been there for at least 30 years, you know, maybe 40, I don't know. So he's so confident in the ways of the abuse that he exercised on you and he feels so cocky in that position and so sure that there would be no consequences because he probably has been doing this for many years. And probably there has been some candidate like myself that were 100% purely there to provide 100 real, real service. I am 100 authentic. I talk 100% the truth. I try to provide every single information for the fine I have, legal information. When I've been to court, I have everything in those folders that I show you and I bring it ready to him. So to make it easy and to help him in this so already challenging process. And... Uh, And he is just so angry at me, aggressive and hostile and hateful. And I just don't know why. I understand that you're not my friend, but there is no reason to discharge all your repressed anger on me. I'm here for a job. I'm not there to, to, to punch me for days because you hate your life or yourself or your decisions. This is wrong. So the school story, again, he come back to this school story and, and he spent a good amount of time in the beginning of the third day telling me that this is a good, there is nothing wrong with that, uh, kind of brainwashing me and saying that this is okay, you know, this happens in family, insinuating all those things and, um, and just trying to push on this very painful memory of mine, just trying to squeeze me and twist it and hurt me, hurt me with my childhood trauma. None of the other people that I talked to who did this process had that. They were like, childhood trauma, why he even gonna talk about that? And I could understand if he was had to discuss this, I don't understand the abuse. Non-American born citizen who have clearances has been abused with this. Why me? Why you abuse me here? So I'm going to talk now about brainwashing because this person had this persistence in trying to brainwash me. And I will tell you merely what I believe was the cause of that. I think this person was aware that he was doing what he's not supposed to do. And he was using this brainwashing techniques, which he probably used on other candidates, to make them fear 
to make them, f I fear for my life too. These tactics did work. I fear for my life. I am fearing that after these videos come out, they can throw me in jail or accuse me of being enemy of the nation like this person did. Accuse me or fabricate some fake story and throw me into prison or, or just fabricate something illegal to lock me or simply kill me. This is the truth. So, said that, um, systematic, so brainwashing is systematic effort to pressure non-believers to accept a certain alliance or command. Well, the, I didn't understand why this person was brainwashing me during this process. Trying to make me adapt my childhood memory. What is good? What is bad? Trying to twist everything I say. Making new stories of everything I say. Writing weird things that I didn't say. Which at this point I didn't care. I, I was thinking I just want to do the, the test in Bulgarian. And I was thinking, I was feeling that I don't want to work for this organization anymore at this point because I realized that this is a sick individual. And part of the brainwashing tactics that he used, he tell me that I have to periodically, once or twice a month, receive this type of session, sessions with him, go to the polygraph with him. Or so. so basically this person was establishing this idea that I have to accept these forms of abuse with an uh, excuse that this is like a pre-polygraph interview that he was periodically going to do with me to check if I'm lying this organization about something. Uh, and in this precise moment, I, I have not even worked for this organization and I'm receiving all this shit. Excuse me, there is no other word to describe that for nothing. So basically, the brainwashing of this individual was focused on telling me that I have to agree to receive this with him uh, because he's there to protect the national security. And if I start to work for this organization, he's going to uh, protect the national security interest, right? Okay. So, brainwashing, what brainwashing include, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to mention what this individual did. So, we said brainwashing is the systematic, systematic effort and pressure to non-believers to accept certain alliance and command. First, isolation. Victim is cut off of associate society or information. Yes, I'm isolated. I'm in a room in the center of this building. I remember one, the second day I was thinking, I was just thinking how difficult it would be to run away from this place because I had the desire to run away. But I was terrorized. I was scared because of what this person was doing. So I was think I I remember like he he was doing one of this fixation of his moment, and while he was doing that, merely not present there, uh, in my head, I thought about getting out of the corridor, the first door, the second door, uh, the third door, and getting out of this building. I just kind of imagine myself doing that in a way because of how inappropriate everything was done. Said that, isolating, I am in a room alone with a person who is not well. No windows in this room. Anger, if I want to go to the toilet, if I want to walk. Um, I went out to smoke, 
I went out maybe once or twice on the 11th and I went out to smoke probably once or twice on the 16th. On, this is the last day of this interview before I said no thank you. Um, phone turn off except on the day two he requested me to search Harun. He wanted to see how this guy look. And the reason that I'm telling you that is because a few days later or a week later, Harun got hit by a car. I think that was not an accident. I think Harun was followed. And I think um, this guy is involved in that. I cannot prove that, but I know 100% that Harun, you were hit by a car after I revealed your picture to this person, uh, which was in August 11th. Uh, Second thing, instructions, don't search pre-polygraph test. We will know when that would be bad for you. Obedience, the second uh, way of brainwash someone, the victim is requested to obey strict rules. Don't talk to your family about this job. Guys, I apply for translator. There is nothing to talk about. I am just a translator. There isn't uh, much, you know. Yes, I was disturbed that they follow me. Yes, I talked to my mom and mom was like, don't worry about it. Take it easy. Take it as a part of the process. So I did share with my mom some things that bothered me that are disturbing. But it's not like I went in detail and, and did all that. I haven't like describe what I'm describing to you to absolutely anyone but I'm gonna put all this out so you can understand what I've been going through because a sociopath had did my pre-polygraph interview and God knows what he wrote in this paper and because of his horrible job I'm being followed already two years this is what I believe at least uh, there is something wrong with this there is a lot of things wrong with this and I want this thing to end this is exactly why I'm creating those videos. Uh, so what is the weird thing about him telling me, forbidding me to talk to people, don't talk to anyone. He's telling me, uh, don't talk to anyone, don't search the polygraph test, don't discuss the process with anyone. You must agree to periodically uh, do these screenings with me. Uh, as if you work with us, do these polygraphs. I have not even worked for this organization and this guy is abusing me 100% in every possible way. And now this person is telling me that I should merely agree periodically to receive this abuse from him uh, just to check if I'm talking the truth. Um, I do feel like I was in jail. This is the feeling, in jail with insane person, very insane. Uh, so, um, the, the third portion of brainwashing is reward and punishments. And this person keep reminding me about the punishments and he keep punishing me through anger, explosion, aggression, hostility, uh, rolling the eyes or excelling or freezing or, or some, some other manipulating tactics. So the rewards and the punishment. Threats. If you search the polygraph, we will know. Don't do it. It's going to be a bad consequences for you. Two. If you talk to your family, you can be killed by people who target us. <gasps> I am just a translator, guys. I apply for translator job. I'm not some special agent. I'm not investigating. I apply for translation job. I'm not even working for you. There is no reason to threat me that somebody would kill me and whatnot. I have a very small circle of people and this person already know this because my computer has been plugged. You know the video, uh, I haven't created this video, but it's going to come out. Um, 
After my Russian test, I find a cable plug into my computer. You remember you see the video where I realize I'm followed. So I'm going to show you this cable. I have it. Said that maybe I have created the video. I have to see. I don't remember. Said that I never in my worst dreams, I imagined that I'm going to talk about this in a video on YouTube or disclose this information. The reason that I'm disclosing this, it's because this is the only way out of this insanity in my belief. I am not going to be left alone unless I break this down uh, and put out the whole story. Because the people that take part of this harassing me are probably unaware of why. They're probably believing that I'm the enemy of the country, that I spy them and they probably think that I provide the information to, to someone or so, uh, something, something. But you're going to hear in the end of this video what this agent fabricated. So, rewards. You are going to have very interesting job. You will be able to negotiate your salary. I was unable, aggression here again, he would talk like this, so upset, so angry, so hateful. Um, another form of brainwashing is repetition. The repetition involves, the form of repetition as a brainwashing tactic involves repetition to strengthen the connection between your neurons. If I see a person as insane, sick individual who confirms some insane statements, doesn't matter how much he repeats his belief. Even if a person make a logical statement and affirmation, if I disagree, it's not going to affect me. It's not going to work because I am the person who decides. So uh, the repetition part was like this part that was really annoying because this person was acting like I struggle with memory. Ask over and over the same questions again. Make me doubt my memory and myself through gaslighting me. Make me repeat the story about my childhood for school and question and question this memory and want me to speculate why my father did that or this or because he's unhealthy. I don't know why. Why don't you go and ask him, sir, why he made these decisions? I'm not inside of my father's head. I cannot tell you why. I don't know why. Okay. So asking me to speculate on that is insane. And that's why I think you're insane, sir. And then the other tactic of the brainwashing, which, which in this case didn't have goal, because usually people brainwash you to make you believe something. Uh, this person was merely goal was to make me doubt myself and trust that uh, this is these behaviors are fine, these behaviors are okay. Uh, he, I have been go through this. Everybody in this agency have no. I am absolutely 100% sure, even if you come and shoot me in the head right now, that nobody in the FBI has accepted this, this type of shit and garbage that you give me. And how I know this is because other people who have done the same process haven't get this garbage. And because I don't think that anyone who is mentally sane will accept your shit, sir. This is exactly what I believe. So this person was trying to brainwash me that this process is within the norm. And everybody who works for this agency not only take these forms of abuse that he exercise on me, but they are voluntarily agree to receive them a few times a month as a part of working for this agency. That, I think, was the reason of his brainwashing or what he was trying to do in this uh, using those abusive tactics on me. I'm going to take a little break, guys. I'm sorry, guys. I <laughs> I, I cut the video, but I'm going to patch it together. 
So said that, um, what is strange about the brainwashing is that um, I am there in this organization speaking 100% the truth, trying to provide most accurately information I can while I have this person aggressing me and abusing me for some reason. Um, if I say yes to a question, he's angry. If I say no, he's questioning that. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk about the pressure. When I say how this person exercised pressure on me uh, and how this happened, how this is the third thing that he did. Uh, the pressure that he increased with with every minute. More hours, more he get aggressive, angry, and so on. Pressure increasing. He is tense, then angry, and he explodes. Accuse me of being guilty of something, or my, it's your fault that is going for so long. Interrupt me, presume things, write them, uh, shut up, then then uh, wait a second here, type something, then uh, uh, then and then what? And when I say the whole story, then he get extremely angry, uh, and then it's you, it's because of you, irritated. Yeah, very irritated. Then suddenly pause and. And stay in some bubble. It's like this person is in the clouds. It's like when you go to mental facility, you know, with this crystal eyes with this look that he's not there. He was not there many times. And then suddenly explode with aggression, you know. Uh, and suddenly then go back to quietness, withdraw. Like he was in his in his own world, you know. And then, um, and the dismissive and the interruptions that I discuss in the video of day two. So, strongly of communication to influence the decision-making process, to improve, adhere to recommendations or social rules or just informal coercion. So, I feel like this person was trying to coerce me uh, and to convince me that instead of searching if he did the job properly um, to trust that he does it properly because he works very long time for them and if I search it uh, he will find out and that would be a very negative consequences for me merely horrible and having in mind how he he's abusive I'm sure he's capable of nasty things so having in mind the power that this person have which is going to be another video I'm going to share. Uh, so I think that the, the main reason for gaslighting me and brainwashing me and exercising this pressure is because he was using those um, interview settings for his own sick satisfactions. And when I say that... Um, I'm, I'm just going to finish to say what other pressures tactics he used. And then I'm going to give you a speculation of the reasons why he would do that. So pressure using triggers. So he know and you know that this childhood story that I share with you, it's difficult for me to talk about. I don't want to say this is trigger, it's just painful. It's very, very painful to talk about this. I don't feel guilty about that. I don't feel bad about myself. Um, it doesn't matter if my sister has forgiven the other of us or how my sister or my brother experienced this. I have forgiven myself. I have accepted myself, but there is a weight, weight of the past that is sad and hurtful. So talking about this, it's painful to me. Um, even like 
putting that video and, and elaborating it, it, I cry the whole time I make that video. I cry all the time that I put that video online because I had to see the timing and I had to see it once again. It hurts. It hurts to remember. It hurts to talk about it. It has nothing to do that I am weak or I have some triggers on that. But this person didn't understand what about this story it's bothering. For him, this is okay. The story for him is fine. It's normal. Um, he abused this information that I provide about this childhood memory uh, with requesting me to repeat it over and over again, giving more details, asking more. Like he would pinch on this thing that hurt me. Um, I think you can fuck off, sir. This is what I think about these behaviors that you have. And I think even like extremely strict mental facility can't help this individual. This is how sick this person is. But I have forgiven you. The second portion of pressure is not allowing me to take breaks. He is angry, aggressive, pissed. If I want a break or I need a break, he will exercise multiple irritation, anger, hostility symbols. And after probably some uh, times when I'm like, I'm going to take a break, you can remain here. At one point I say, sir, you can remain here. I'm going to go to walk in the corridor. I'm, I'm just going to go to smoke. You don't have to come out with me. You can keep typing on this computer, correct? You have already all the PDFs, so most of the information you have but I feel like this person kept me merely to have company because he's probably also very lonely individual and this is the only way for him to get company, I'm guessing. Another manipulation, uh, chosen or pressure. If you, if you allow this pressure, if you allow this abuse, talking about the manipulation of the reward, oh yeah, you're going to be chosen. Only 0.01% of the population can pass those tests and can do these things. Um, prioritizing himself. His opinions about the polygraph, about the process, are above anything I can read or search for this. I am forbidden to search and to know about polygraph. Uh, because he says so, and if I do it, it's going to be bad consequences for me. I'm going to lose the chance of my life, the chance to buy a house. So, well, okay, you're not going to search it, right? You're going to obey to this. I obey to this. Uh, Self-care, relaxing and taking a break was not allowed, at least not by this individual. Saying no. On the day three, I know that I have this extremely unhealthy individual, I would say psychopath or sociopath, or probably a lot of those, including multiple personality disorder, probably some schizophrenia, and, and some other things that are very disturbing. Uh, if I say no to something, that would be a gracious. Uh, you better tell me. You tell me because I'm very good at everything and I'm telling you, if you don't tell me, I'm going to know anyways. So there was, if I didn't want to talk about something, I say, sir, I'm not going to discuss this, for example. Um, that was on the day three uh, that I just see that this person is so insane that talking or Explaining anything, it doesn't make much sense. So, um, I think in a healthy environment, if I say I don't want to talk about this, there shouldn't be no argument, no aggression, no abuse, no pressure. No. You're so good, go find out. You, you tell me you're so great, right? 
So the matter of the fact is that I think that this person doped how good he is at what he does. And this is why he pressure you to reveal things that he can use to damage you. Because this is exactly what he did during these settings. It's damaging, it's disturbing me to even talk about. So um, I'm going to talk about the school story. Do you remember, guys, um, that I talk about the school story in day one, day two? And now it's day three. I'm going to share part of this story, uh, which I unfortunately was not allowed to share with this person because he would aggressor me with, who do you think you are? This is not memorial of your life. Uh, he would cut me, interrupt me, and do all this set of aggressive tactic, which has nothing to do with the polygraph or pre-polygraph clearances test. It was just this person abusing me. But before I share this story with you, um, I would share um, why or what I believe was done merely for the entertainment of this not very healthy individual. So um, by this time, I noticed that this person has no emotions. Uh, there was this empty eyes, like somebody who sneak or got high on heroin. I don't know if you have seen people who are drug addicts. I work in a center for this. I volunteer sometime. This person was extremely uh, dry. Uh, when I say no emotions, I don't say emotions for me. He was empty. There was no human traits in this individual. No feelings, no emotions like joy, no... Um, no pain. He was 100% numb to absolutely anything. Uh, I don't think this person is able to function in a regular life alone because of how dysfunctional he demonstrated to be. But um, the need of abuse, where was this coming from? And here I'm going to reveal my speculation on the why? What was this nourishing for this individual? Because people that abuse others usually do this because this satisfies some need for them. Uh, when I was talking about my father in my childhood and the way he was abusing me, um, the million ways that he was abusing me that this agent assembled as well in a many details, sometimes I would try to understand why. As in this case, I would try with this agent during this interview, I would try to obey, to appease him, to uh, even though I find out that redoing those documents was wasting of time, I know it was wasting of time, I know it wasn't necessary, I know it didn't make any differences if the, the it's one PDF. He wanted me to separate it in different PDFs for some reason. The truth is it didn't matter. I provide the information and this is what it mattered there. You had it there. I'm not the secretary of this agent. I'm, I'm not even working for this agency. Uh, asking me to do certain things for me, in my opinion, they was absolutely useless. Uh, he, he was just merely doing it to keep me busy with himself, uh, to make some importance for who he is and how important is this job or this task. Because this person naturally, in my opinion, struggled with a big, big portion of insecurities. Uh, insecurities as his own value. Uh, he didn't see any value on what he's doing. And the reason that he was trying to establish so much importance uh, in my own head for who he is and how important is because for him, what he does is nothing, is not important. 
he doesn't feel happy or satisfied by this job and um, and for him was very important to get control over my opinions on him to to be important you know because only through the importance of others he would feel successful only through stepping on others machinating others destroying others he fulfilled these insecurities that he had, you know. Uh, this is one of it. And I think this person wasn't very successful in in life. This is my speculations again. He is not successful because, because of the need to uh, put me down. Um... I personally feel very successful, although you can see me as a failure, although I have problems with working, although this horrible childhood story I told you, although I haven't worked for months and I struggle paying my rent, although I don't have a lot of money, I feel very successful with myself. I like who I am. I like what I do. Uh, and I don't care what you're going to say. It could sound bad and cocky. I am sad when you guys bully me under this channel. It hurts. But it doesn't matter in the end of the day because I go to bed and I ask myself, you wanna, um, are you a bad person or a good person? Do you like yourself? And I like myself, including my errors including those things that I am ashamed of that I share with you I like who I am today and I'm proud of who I am today uh, and it doesn't matter like if you're gonna see me as successful or as failure uh, I'm happy if I can inspire someone I'm happy if I can help I'm happy if my video motivates someone but if my video doesn't motivate someone I'm not going to invest any energy to abuse them or put them down. Uh, if somebody puts something very vulgar, my YouTube will ban the comment itself and will remove it. I'm not going to manually do that. There is an app on the YouTube that will do that. So if you see my value or not, it doesn't matter. And the same was with this agent. If he saw the value of and the challenges of sharing what I share, it didn't matter to me because I was truthful. Um, and, and when I talk about some sick pleasure that he experienced in doing that, um, I think that this person need the, the other people opinions or, um, it's like this narcissistic type of thing, you know, when you need the others to admire you in order to feel successful and to shine. Uh, this is what this person struggled with. Nothing to do with, um, with me, you know. I believe that people exhibit who they are not because of me, but because they are like that. And I'm pretty sure that if somebody go back and see the interviews of this agent, this type of unhealthy behaviors and patterns that I mentioned here, I would repeat. I'm 100% sure. Um, maybe in this agency they need mentally unhealthy people for some reason to do things that healthy individuals can't do. Maybe. I don't know. So I realized that this person in the end of the J3, while he was abusing me, he uh, experienced some kind of pleasure from that. Pleasure from feeling something. He was feeling my pain, something that he is unable to feel for himself, for his own life. And this give him pleasure. This is exactly why this person was doing that, because he experienced pleasure through hurting, through hurting others, through abusing others, because I think this person is a sadist. Uh, there is nothing um, 
how to say, I'm not bullying here people who struggle with mental health. Uh, I've been working with some organizations where parents recognize that the children have sadist, sadist tendencies and they help them to, to cure that. And in this case, I see that this person was sadist. Uh, I recognize that because I had a sadist father, sad, sadist parent. My father was abusing me until he could in every possible form and shape. So I can recognize a sadist because I've been exposed to one for 21 years of my life. 21 is exactly when I move away uh, and when I start my separation and, and my confusion and, and trying to understand the world and the other people. And it took me many years to elaborate what I'm sharing with you. So this individual was a sadist. I see that on the first day and I see it on the second and on the third day. Sadist is a person who feel pleasure when they hurt others. My opinion, I don't think this person should do this job. I don't think this person is mentally capable to work for this organization. But I'm nobody. This is just my opinion. This is just my impressions. I'm just sharing this because I want this sadist and the power he have and the people under him leave me alone. So now I'm going to share a story that I didn't share with this sadist. And the reason that I didn't do this is because this person aggressively interrupted me and was merely focused into abusing me and torturing me instead of going through this process. But I'm doing it right right now. I'm discussing this with you. And I'm putting it out there because I want this story to be over. Um... I am sure that once I finish to disclose all the information, this will be over. I don't know if I'm going to be alive, but I would like to hope so. So in the previous video, I talk about how my father decided to kidnap my sister from school. I am 15. Uh, I think I complete 15. It was during September. No, I'm 14 something. My sister is 15. So the story started a little bit earlier. I guess it's the story with the school problem lasted for some time. Um, so let me get mentally ready. So I stopped the story at the moment that my father went to get my sister. They both run. And next thing I see, I see my father starting to beat my sister in front of everyone, in front of the school, in front of the students. And here was this uh, student that was in the same classmate of my sister. He was doing uh, karting. He was doing sports car. I thought he was very beautiful. Uh, he was one of these guys that, like from the movies to me, you know, I've been seeing him at school and he would wear always these things when he come from the karting. It was his passion. He would go to the school with this. Um, and I thought it was very beautiful. So this guy would try to protect my sister from my father. And, and next thing you know, I mean, he's, he's abusing her in public. They call the police, the school. He's trying to drag her and beat her. They pull my sister in the school. My father tried to follow her at school and try to beat her in, everyone, so in front of everyone. As you understand, for my father, abuse... It's normal, it's natural. Um, he has been pretty good at to keep the severe abuse at home. But I will tell you that there was several situations where other people, adults, uh, were in the house. 
like normal people and my father would beat my sister um, for hours and these people will just watch this and um, nobody would call the police or anything. There was no help. Nobody would help us. Nobody would. Uh, I remember this person. He was about 40, 50. It was a male. They do, They wouldn't stop my father. You know, there was nobody willing to protect us. And so I see this guy, boy, 16 years old boy who tries to protect my sister uh, and I thought, oh my God, I got scared for him because I know how sick is my father. And the next thing you know, uh, this become a huge scandal and my father is trying to kidnap my sister in front of everyone telling I'm the father. Well, in his insanity, he forgot to bring any documents. So the, the, the teacher says, can I see a document? Who are you? And you imagine the insanity of his behavior. Um, this person, um, the teacher called the police. So I see part of this abuse and then I sit in this uh, stairs. Everybody went inside and there is no, I don't know what is happening. I'm just sitting there and waiting and then the police come and police go inside of the school and uh, and I just sit there, you know. Um, I wish I wasn't there. It was cold too, I remember it was cold. It was in the winter. So um, my sister just uh, completed 15 and I was just completed 14. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, we were stopped from school, so it must have been November or December, something like that, I don't know. Uh, but I think it was close to the moment that my sister was 15, age and half, and I was closer to, um, to 14 and half. Um, and so, um, the police come. Of course, they took my sister and they make expertise test. And they see that my sister is all blue and black. And so now my father, but I didn't know this portion at this moment. Um, but I knew that we go home from this without my sister. The police take my sister to, cost, to custody, if you want to call it. Um, they bring my sister to the police station together with my father. And my sister was waiting on the corridor and there was some police. And when she saw my father, she fainted. And just because she fainted from fear... They took her and they take the med and they did the medical exam, and this is when they discovered this extreme cruelty and abuse um, through this expertise. But I didn't know that at this precise moment. What I knew is that from this day we went home, and my father would make those gatherings where he would um, question. So my father and one of his girlfriend, Valentina, who has more education than the... So the Valentina is the brunette girlfriend and Galina is the blonde one. Galina is the one that is kind of the dumb one. And Valentina is the most educated one because she went to the university. And in fact, my father stopped her from the university when she came to live with us. I was about three or four of course, my mom was gone, so he needed help to take care of us. And he find these two women two, uh, that had their own problems. And this is another story why they come to this village in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of the nowhere, to live and take care of us for their own problems. It was not out of love. Said that uh, these two girlfriends now, 
He made Valentina to write a story about what a great parent he is. And this story, we were brainwashed to memorize, all of us. Me, my older twin, the older twin of Petya Nadezhda, uh, and my little brother, and of course his girlfriends. Well, now that Petya was gone, I was, how to say, the target. When I say I was the target, I mean that now, uh, Joanna, spiritually, you're possessed by the devil. And so the story that he narrow and he make us memorize is that we have a very good father. He loves us very much. He takes care of us. Other ma the mother abandoned us. He never beat us. Uh, he loves us and, and some very strange things that I never heard before in my life, you know. Not only I never heard, but uh, I haven't like imagined that my father know what love is. He was just abusive and angry and hateful. All my life so now he was making us memorize this narrow um, and and I just didn't understand why uh, there was particular pressure on me because not only he make us memorize that but he also question us supposing what kind of question this police could ask us and so, of course, I memorized this fake theory or fake narrow very fast. And as I mentioned before, for now for 14 years of my life, my father had been beaten me regularly, accusing me of lying, accusing me of being dishonest, of stealing, uh, of being possessed by the devil, that making me to have to confess something, the same process that this agent did. My father had been doing this all my life until I went out of this house and, and I was trying to learn how money work and how world work because I, I had never had access to money before. So I didn't understand how money, how bills function. I have no idea and I'm 21. I have no idea, absolutely nothing about how to survive in this world because I've been secluded in this abusive reality for 21 years where I was convinced to be a monster. And probably part of me still have a difficult time to believe that somebody could be that insanely attracted to me like this individual because of the things that he did after this interview or he make it happen after this interview. So said that now I'm again back to the story of my father in this questioning. Now my father is teaching me to lie. So, I valued myself as a child highly or I liked myself because I was truthful. And, and I have noticed that my truthfulness has never bring me anything good. Not with this family, of course. With my Italian mommy, I'm, I know you're not going to say it. I love you, mommy. With, with healthy people, being truthful and it's, it's valued. It's, it's okay. With unhealthy individuals like my father and like this agent, being truthful is not okay. Um, so now for first time after I being abused for 14 years to confess, something to constantly confess uh, com for example I will give you example of this confession that I had to do every day 
coming to school, I had to confess, getting out of the class, where I walk, and sometimes there was this coffee right next to the bus station, and as I mentioned, I didn't have adequate clothes, my shoes had holes, and when the wind blow, and it's really cold, it's like cold like in Colorado, uh, it's very cold. The socks had holes, the shoes had holes, nothing was adequate, you know? So, to avoid the cold, I would enter in the coffin, dressed like a gypsy, with holes and stains and dirty clothes, because these girls were not very good at taking care of us. Um, I've, I've been ashamed of my clothes for, for 21 years of my life, and then when I had my first boyfriend, uh, in Sofia, he would bully me for my clothes too. Uh, his name was Chavdar. So I've been bullied. I would put it very good 23 years of my life for my clothes. Because they are ugly, dirty, miserable with stains and holes. And now... Uh, this agent bully me because he thinks I dress too good, you know. So this is again another thing like, why would you bully me? Let me dress the way I like. What, why it matters to you? Why this is a problem for you? So anyways, back to the story. This is just very difficult for me to talk about. The story of the childhood. Now my father is training me to lie. I just didn't understand this questioning process or why he would ask me or tell me about your father, is your father good and all these things. He would ask me the questions and he would ask me to memorize the answers. Uh, of course, verbal abuse, as, uh, as I mentioned, was part of this process and he would also beat me. Uh, but he would try to beat me in a way not to have bruises uh, because now he is scared. But I didn't uh, realize that he was scared. I was just having these problems of this uh, continuous story with my sister, with the police and, and with questioning. But I knew police was involved. I knew my sister wasn't at home. I didn't know why, but I know that my father was making this story of him being a great father and all of that. And so after I, I think this preparation with questioning me per hours and preparing me to give those answers lasted for a few weeks. And I think that my father tried to postpone this as saying that we have school, homeschooling, and I don't... I remember that my father was having this strategy to postpone this whole thing that they would forget. And I know that the, they keep calling him to bring other parts of family members to give their testimony. So I know that the first person that went to testify was his girlfriend, uh, Galia, the the blonde one, and of course, as you understand, she was absolutely codependent, masochistic person as well. So she blindly repeat everything and glorify him and put him in this pedestal. And my father was hoping that uh, this would be enough uh, to, to hide the fact that he was abusing not only my sister, he was beating her with extreme cruelty and dishumanity. Because now that this was in police hands, this went to child support. I would like to share something here about my childhood. Um, you know, I was when I was waiting the bus close to the bus station, there was this school, there's like this place for uh, people, for children with no parents like a foster home and I would see that they had new clothes you know when they start to school I was I was you know if I ever been envious in my life I wanted my childhood dream I wanted to be in a foster home I was envious of these children that were living in a foster homes because they had better life than me um if I ever, I've been envious of those children. Um, just, they could walk calmly, 
from school to this place and, and I had to run to catch the bus as my sister because my sister if she get earlier she would uh, say things to my father to beat me and tell him that I didn't go home right away you know or that I talk to children or something like that so my my sister Nadezhda also sadist not healthy exactly like my father and my sister Petya, who was the victim also of this abuse because she had a boyfriend, uh, she developed some other things. I don't know if I am sane or mentally healthy after all this story that I'm telling you. But I'm trying to keep it together, you know. I'm really trying I've been trying so hard so I suppose that the testimony to the police of my father girlfriend wasn't enough because uh, one day I was brought to the police and and then the police uh, it was a female it was a woman the police lady uh, ask me tell me how it's like to live with your father and yes of course I started to narrow the story that I memorized um, and she said no again the story I have heard this story you all of you memorize this story it's obvious and I did feel a lot of shame. I was so ashamed of myself. Um, and then this lady said to me, here, take a pen and paper and write it down. Um, and I wrote the word, my father is and then I stopped. I could not write these lies on a piece of paper. I, I just couldn't. So uh, the lady went out. She said, take the time as you need. I will be back. Do you want a coffee? Do you want a call? I never had a coffee in my life or anything. She was very friendly. And I don't remember anyone being friendly with me ever. I'm 14 years old. And I have heard only negative feedback for who I am and and like how I am not on the level of my sister Nadezhda and and I've been punished like constantly deprived from food, beaten um, in the summer after some months look in this house I would run away just to see my f I had a childhood friend to see her knowing that if I'm catched, that would mean abuse me and deprive me from food and uh, beat me and mock me. But I will still do it. Because my need for, probably from some friendliness, was higher than my need for food. It's like I, I had to pick at one point knowing that after I go out, I will be catched and I will be beaten and locked and deprived from food. Aware of this, I would still sometimes run. But I would usually run uh, from in the evening when they go to sleep and and I would go to see my friend Lusa. Lubomira is her name. I believe that if I'm mentally together today, let's think 
to this friend. Um, I don't think you're gonna see that. Аз не верам, че ти ще го видиш това. Но... Аз заблагодаря на Бог, че те имаш и че те има и... Наистина, въпреки, че отново не говорим често, се надявам от сърце, че да имаш някой, който да ти дава надежда да оцелееш, така както ти беше за мен. So, um, this friend of mine, her name was Yusa, she uh, was my secret friend for many years. Because we were forbidden to have friends and if I ran away, it was for her, to see her and to talk to her. You know, we would talk and share things and she is the only person in my childhood that would hug me and say I love you or say something good. I, I really feel very lucky that I had these interactions that helped me survive this. Um, with her I could talk about these things uh, sometimes and then she would hug me. Then she could talk about her things. <laughs> so, um, back to the the story about the police. So now I'm at the police station and and I had to narrow these fake things. Um, and now I have this pen and paper to do that. And because of that, um, the policeman went out and I've been thinking about me running out of the house. But my running was just for a few hours, you know, and and the way that I was treated after that was beyond cruelty. Uh, and, and part of me knew that I'm taking this risk when I would run away. But being locked in this house for, for many months was very hard. It was like jail. No TV, no radio. No, there was nothing fun. There was just nothing there, just abuse, you know. And so now the funnest part was going to school, yeah. Because at school, nobody abused you. Or I get bullied for my clothes and shoes, but this usually is in the breaks. So there is less abuse at school for me. So now that school was off, it was horrible, you know. It's terrible, terrible. And um, and the police uh, officer told me this at one point as she saw that I didn't write anything. She showed me the medical expertise uh, of my sister condition. And she told me independently of what you're going to write, your sister isn't gonna come home anymore. It's not gonna happen. Uh, independently what your father teach you to say, this is not gonna happen. She's not coming home. Um, and um, And then I wrote the truth. Uh, the police officer showed me the testimony of my sister and my brother and the girlfriend of him. They all lied. Um, 
I was very confused uh, if my father had this um, abusing me for 14 years, accusing me of lying and saying lies, the worst thing, and now he was asking them to lie and they all lie for him, you know. And um, yeah, my sister was taken away from us. She did not um, come home. And my father would blame that on my mother. He would say that she is diabolical and that he's gonna abuse her or destroy her or make, uh, he would talk threats about that. Um, but yeah, so that's the second part about the questioning. The reason that I mentioned that is because uh, these questioning procedures that this agent did weren't new to me. None of this is new to me because I had this hell for 21 years uh, where, where the problems were simply fabricated by this father and with time my sisters uh, because now they were copying these behaviors trying to put me down or trying to put me in a situations of problems where they can give motive to my father to abuse me or prove to me how unworthy I am and uh, as some kind of a price to earn his love. Um, I can openly say that uh, these two sisters and a brother that I grow up, they don't have um, basic human consideration for me. They never had it. They address me to pay bills and help in their problems solve the things and the moment that I do they switch into abusing me and putting me down and offending me calling me prostitute and slut and making some stories with um, what a horrible person I am uh, why nobody loves me uh, why nobody wanna talk to me why nobody cares about me because I am a horrible being, I am this monster that needs correction. Um, and um, this is one of the reasons that I don't keep contact with these people um, today. Um, I stopped paying their bills and, and now they don't care to know if I'm dead or alive and none of these people um, cares about me it's the truth um, said that I'm gonna finish this first portion here <laughs>